Hi, and welcome back. As you probably can tell, uh, we are through that one week of nice windows open weather and full speed ahead into the sweltering summer that we're also used to in the Mid-Atlantic. As indicated by, you know, the tank top switcheroo, a little chambray short situation, and my ridiculous sunburn. Uh, but we're still here, and I still didn't have my hair cut, just so we're all on the same page. So what the warm weather also means is that there's an ever-increasing bounty at the farmer's market. And so all of you know, I go to the 32nd Street Farmer's Market in Waverly, and week by week, we've been seeing more and more amazing product come to the market from our local farms and vendors. So that's what this recipe is really about today. First of all, the pea guy is back. Uh, his name is Thomas McCarthy. He has a family farm down in Caroline County, Maryland, and he brings amazing beans, everything to the market all the time. Um, but my favorite thing that I see are these bright green, beautiful, crunchy, sweet, almost tart, uh, freshly shucked peas. Managed to get myself three pounds of those this week. Another great ingredient that is highly seasonal are scapes. So these don't last too long, um, but when they are around, you need to get your hands on them. What scapes are, are the stems, kind of very cool and like a tentacle sort of, uh, to hard neck garlic, which is the type of garlic, typically it's a little bit redder, um, a little bit spicier on the flavor, um, and it has a hard neck coming out of that. Just wanted to demonstrate that. We also have um, some amazing ground lamb. This is from Liberty Delights Farm. They are a sustainable uh, farm in Maryland, and they actually, you know, they grow most of the food that they feed their animals, and then in order to reduce waste, they often um, supplement that with uh, some of the leftover produce from the neighboring farms, which I think is really, really great. Find them online at um, Liberty Delight Farms. They have an Instagram as well. Oh, I forgot to mention, the scapes are from the Farm Alliance of Baltimore, which is a really great uh, kind of conglomerate of all of the urban farms in Baltimore, and it's a way for them to sell at different marketplaces. So I really love supporting them. They always have great stuff. And then finally, our ingredient is, you know, we're back to the old faithful and pasta artisans rigatoni. So as you can tell, we're making a pasta dish today. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my uh, enamel pan going. I've also got water here, just bubbling ahead in case you can hear that. Uh, we're going to start by putting in a quarter cup of olive oil. I'm going to turn the heat up now that the pan is hot. And the first thing we're, that we're going to do is we're going to toss in the shallots. This is um, about one and a half small shallots, um, very close to minced. My technique wasn't super great. Throw that in and give it a stir. So while that gets started, I'll tell you a little bit more about scapes. So scapes, um, garlic family, obviously because they are the stem of garlic, they are super versatile. So you can throw them in a salad, for example, and eat them raw. You could theoretically roast them and use them as a dressing. Um, today we're going to saute them because they do have a bit of a crunch and they are a little bit spicy. Uh, and that's just going to pump up the sauce that we're making. Another way that I plan on using them later in the week is to throw them right in with some basil, pine nuts, and pecorino romano cheese and use them to make a pesto. So they can actually be substituted for garlic itself, but I tend to like to mix actual garlic with the garlic scapes. Thanks for coming to my garlic scape TED talk very quickly. All right, so we do just want to get these shallots going and we want to make sure that the pan is getting hot. This recipe is really, really very, very simple. I love ground lamb. It's one of my favorite meats. I love the flavor profile. I love everything about it. Uh, and one thing that I'll note about this recipe is that you could change it up a little bit. Let me explain. So what I'm going to focus on is building a really fresh flavor profile. So we've got the peas, which I said are a little bit sweet and they're kind of crunchy. I've got garlic, obviously, uh, and then I have a ton of dried oregano. So I love the combination of an aromatic like oregano 
with a gamey meat like lamb. It's really one of my favorites. It almost has some like definitely Mediterranean vibes with almost some Greek inspired vibes going on. You could, uh, however, substitute, say, fresh mint or something like that. Um, I know that lamb and mint definitely go together. It's a good, a good flavor match. I personally don't love mint, so hence I'm going with oregano, but just bear in mind, you really could take whatever dried or really nice fresh herb that you had, rosemary, even basil, uh, and combine it in here with all of these savory ingredients and really achieve something delicious. All right, so now that my heat is up, the oil is shimmering, the shallots are getting fragrant, I'm gonna go ahead and dump in, this is about a pound of ground lamb. Quickly go and break this up, because I do want this to brown, so I want to give it an opportunity to sit in contact with the, the hot enamel pan and really caramelize. So when you start to see the, the, the fat cook out and the meat take on a little bit of a brown, golden, crispy texture. Make sure we're on maximum heat here and we let that sit undisturbed for just a couple minutes. So I'm going to take this cooking time to talk a little bit about, about some wine that I'm enjoying and that I think are, you know, nice compliments to this meal. So with a red meat, you typically would have red wine, but like there's no rule that says that has to be the case. So one of the ideas I had was we'll talk about this wine here. So this is the, uh, from the menu, the maker uh, Torre de Ibiati. It's a pecorino. It's called uh, Giocaremo, uh, Giocaremo con i fiori, which means I play with the flowers. I'm sure there's like some story behind it. That'll take a little more Googling. Not gonna worry about that right now. But um, so this is a native uh, grape to Italy. It's called pecorino, which means sheep, similar to a pecorino romano, which we'll get to later. Uh, and it's really, really nice. If you'll notice, it actually has a really interesting kind of golden honey color. So like Tour de Chardonnay in color, but the flavor is really amazing. So on the nose, it's definitely got honeysuckle. And then, you know, you have florals like gardenia, maybe jasmine. It's really, really beautiful and delicious. Flavor-wise though, what I was saying, it's, it's super zesty and super minerally. So it's not, buttery or heavy like a Chardonnay, but it actually is super refreshing, very, very crisp. And I think it'll go nicely with the kind of saltiness and richness that you get from Pecorino, Pecorino Romano, as well as a lot of savory aspects we're getting from, you know, salt, herbs, and garlic here. So, really delicious. I got this at Bin 604 at the recommendation of uh, Nick Kane, who's like one of the great associates there, he always has great recommendations. Uh, another option, and you see this is really going, uh, and then I'll probably move on to this when we move into the actual meal, is I got this like really amazing, um, this is from Basilicata, it's 100% Alianico, one of my favorite grapes out of Italy, if you haven't tried it, give it a try, this is like a rather nice bottle, I got it for steak night last night, didn't even get through it, which is like very typical. Um, Explore Alianico, there is a great range of kind of price points that you can get, and I really, I, I haven't found one I don't like. There, it's uh, pretty versatile, sun-dried tomatoes, baked earth, deep, dark flavors, super, super rich. Love it. Give it a try. This is the Canetto. It's a 30th anniversary of this winemaker right now. Another great Vin 604 recommendation. We're gonna give this a nudge. Perfect. Getting some nice golden edges here. We're gonna take the opportunity now to throw in the garlic. The garlic escapes. And give that just a quick stir. Breaking up these pieces a little bit more so that they'll be 
really manageable when it comes to incorporating into the sauce. Let that sear on the super high heat a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my oregano. Maybe went over, but we'll save a little bit. It's called restraint, people. Work that in. Oh, mm, smells amazing. All right. The last wine that I'm going to talk about here is actually the wine that we're using, but a half a cup um, in this sauce. So this is called S.A., kind of like a play on words for S.A., South Africa. This is a white blend. It's primarily Chenin Blanc. I think it's like over 70%. And then Vignette and Roussan. Uh, this is the 2019 vintage, and if I, I'm not exaggerating when I probably bought half of what Vincent before got in, and the other day I was in there, and I saw this bottle sitting on the counter, hadn't seen it in months, and I, I kind of like yelped, uh, and Georgian, who's um, another one of my favorite folks who works there, super, super knowledgeable about wine, um, saw the light in my eyes, and was super um, kind enough to let, let me have this. So this is one of Mark and my, my favorite wines uh, right now, and we can't wait until, you know, the next vintage comes out and Vin 604 is able to get it. So thank you, Georgian, thank you, Vin 604, you really made yeah. My night, and, and, and this recipe, obviously. Check out um, SA Wines. They actually have a really great red wine, too. All right, so this is going. We've got great, I'm going to attempt to show, great browning here going on. Lots of luxurious fat in there. We're going to go ahead and deglaze with the white wine. Hear that going? Wonderful. Our water is boiling for the pasta. All right, so then this is another kind of tip or trick. I don't, I don't really know if I'd even go that far. Uh, but with the fresh peas, we don't want to overcook them, right? Because they're beautiful, they're green, they're plump, they've got bite to them. If I cook them too long, they just become shriveled and mushy. And we've all had mushy peas. Nobody, nobody wants any of that. Uh, so now that I've got the wine deglazed in there, it's got some of the good kind of crispy bits off the bottom of the pan. I'll give it a little bit of a scrape just to make sure we work in all of that flavor. Be careful. Um, I'm using silicon because I know it won't damage the pan, but you, it's always tempting to want to use like a metal spatula to scrape it all up. Just be careful and protect your pans, people. All right, so I'm gonna drop in butter, the peas. This is a full pound of peas. So I've been waiting for months for those. Um, we're gonna go ahead and try to work this in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat down a bit. Keep that butter in there to let it melt. Add some black pepper. Some sea salt. a pinch of fresh red pepper, maybe three pinches, who's counting? Move this in, incorporate a little bit more. Oops. Whoop. This is all coming together really nicely. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my Pecorino Romano. Notice I'm putting it all over because I don't want it to kind of glob up in one big clump. This is not gonna be a creamy sauce. It's just gonna be nice and kind of rich and, 
and butter it. Yeah, we consider we put a decent amount of butter in it. Now incorporate this. Let that cheese meld in. All the delicious flavor we build up in there. I love that the peas are getting even brighter as they cook. The point right now is to really just let the butter melt and um, incorporate with the wine and let the cheese incorporate in there as well. We're not trying to necessarily, you know, sear off any more of the meat or, or overcook the peas. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and drop my pasta. So, in pasta says you need like five to eight minutes. I tend to go even like on the shorter side because the last thing I want is a mushy over pasta. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this, set my timer for five minutes, and I'll be back to plate this all up for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you're inspired. Check out Ben 604's wine. Check out Alianico as a grape. Check out SA Wines. Definitely, see if you can get your hands on a Pecorino, great varietal. And go to the 32nd Street Farmer's Market. Farm Alliance Baltimore on Instagram, Liberty Delight Farms, and Impasta Artisans, they all made these great ingredients possible. Thank you.